Hello and welcome to Cracking the Cryptic. So today, just a regular solve, or looking at my solve of today's fiendish puzzle, which I've written up in Excel. There's the fiendish puzzle from the Times, and here's my Excel version. So first of all, looking for these shoots that, that are so helpful. Two twos in the bottom three boxes means the only other one could have been there. And then those twos, you follow them around the grid and you can suddenly fill in all the twos in the grid. So that's quite a useful start. Now it looks like sixes might be beginning the same way. The only six in the bottom row has to be here. It can't be here because of that one. And now I'm starting to fill in possibilities. So the only places threes can be in this central bottom box are in the bottom row. Similarly in that row in this bottom right box. Um, and now I'm kind of scanning the grid for other things that I can either eliminate down. Now I've spotted this central row, 8, 1, 2, 4 are now possible within the box, and 9, 3 from outside it. So the 9 and 3 have to be in the corners, and that 9 fixes those, and 5, 6, 7 in the center. That puts 8 and 4 at the edges, and that 4 fixes those. Um, and really it's just looking across and down all the time at the possibilities to see what you can do that might help you going forward. And that's the only place for a one in the central column. And that helps with some other ones as we move around the grid. And in fact, I think all the ones are now done. So again, looking for just individual numbers can help. Now that's helped with the six there, but then it gets a little harder. And so far, I've just been looking in rows and columns, as I say, for so kind of narrowing down where sixes can be there. Making some progress on sixes now, but we're left with two pairs of sixes that aren't resolved. And as I say, so far I've been looking at rows and columns, especially where two numbers, two of the same number have appeared in the same three by three column or row. And where that happens, that often enables us to eliminate that. But sometimes we need to be finding cells to make progress where everything else has been eliminated. Um, and I think, was that the case up here? Was this three? I think maybe. Oh no, it's in a, it's in a corner at the moment, sorry. Where now down in this bottom right corner, as you can see, if you're quicker than I was at the time, there's only one possibility, and that would be very helpful. But at the moment, I'm still a bit fixed on where, on eliminating down possibilities within boxes. But sometimes you have to switch to, instead of array logic, as one of our commenters put it, to cell logic. And this cell that I'm pointing to with my arrow cursor here in the bottom would be very useful to focus on. As you can see, above it we have 148623, and on the right we have 9, and in the box we have 5. So that has to be a 7, and it would be quite a useful piece of progress to note that at this point. Instead, I'm still working on these pairs around, uh, narrowing down the possibilities for where pairs can go, finding the occasional box where this array logic, as it's called, um, helps or fixes the number. That was the only place for a nine up there. Um, nines are actually a bit more constrained than I'm realizing. I think nine, I'm noticing now that nines could be there. And in fact, this cell is the only cell in this box where a nine could be. And that would, that would be quite a useful bit of array logic to notice. So you kind of need to, you can get a long way on, on array logic, but an occasional piece of cell logic will help considerably. And there, I finally spotted that seven, and that started to narrow things down. I probably didn't need to write that. Oh, yeah, just, that was a misprint, actually. So I fixed that whole column now, um, and considerable progress. Now I've spotted that nine again. That was from array logic. Um, and now, now we've got to the point where whole boxes are being complete. And that's always quite a nice point in a Sudoku because you're really making progress when you've filled one of the whole three by three boxes. I think I often see that as 
if not the home straight, at least the final bend, as it were, to use an athletics metaphor. And really now, having, having used that one bit of cell logic, it's just finishing off at this point, spotting the kind of remaining things where um, there's only one possibility left and filling them in. So, you know, that's called fiendish in the Times. I don't think it is that fiendish because it doesn't need any of the really clever techniques that Simon's been showing videos on. Um, and this is just a video to kind of get us back to seeing that most Sudokus, really, really the high proportion of Sudokus that are published, can be solved with just some fairly methodical array logic. Now, obviously, I'm getting as quick as I can um, so that, you know, this gets knocked out in three or four minutes and that, that would be normal for me for a finished puzzle. Um, but it's an interesting, I think, look into the benefits of using array logic, looking at the arrays, looking at the rows and columns, and then occasionally switching to the cells. Um, thanks for watching. I hope that's of some value to you, and uh, see you again on Cracking the Cryptic soon. Um, I'm hoping actually to, to do a video about the, the horror of what Simon calls guessing and what I call bifurcation soon. And uh, maybe that'll be coming up shortly. So thanks for watching. Hope to see you again. Bye now.